and I finally knew what I had to do. And I verbally, uh, visually set my father down in the chair. He was no longer alive, but I visioned him in the chair. And I said out loud, Father, I forgive you. I cancel the debt I've held against you. I'm no longer going to try to collect my childhood back. And I freed myself and I instantly felt free. In the next hour, I put everyone who had offended me. I put my mother uh, all right on down the line. And at the end of the hour, I felt the peace of God that passes all understanding. I had never felt it before. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Tom for the 24 Today Podcast. Thank you again for listening in today. My very special guest is Terry Stewick. And we are going to talk about a subject that I know that you relate to. I relate to it. Everybody who lives life relates to it. And it is called the subject of forgiveness. Now, Terry has uh, written a couple of books. Uh, one is his latest book. It's called Being God, Stealing God's Power, Glory, and Kingdom. But the one that uh, I'm going to be highlighting most in this subject today is called Forgive Instantly and Live Free. Terry has degrees in psychology and theology, and uh, he has for many years worked with uh, missions and has done a lot of uh, city rescue mission work, lives in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, he has personally uh, dealt a lot with forgiveness because of the background that we are going to talk about today. Terry, thank you for being on the podcast and welcome, sir. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Tom. You are, you are welcome. So tell us again, I said that you lived in Atlanta, Georgia. Anything else about you that you'd like to share before we get going? Oh, uh, my wife and I uh, live here in Atlanta. We have six children. They're scattered across the world, one in Ireland, uh, one up in Ohio, one in Florida. But three live here in uh, the Atlanta area. And I was raised uh, myself on an Iowa farm, so I'm a Midwest uh, farm boy. And I said earlier that we're talking about forgiveness, which, uh, again is a subject that we all deal with in life, but you yourself, from the time that you were just a young boy, really needed to start trying to figure this out. Can you tell me uh, some things that that were going on, in particular with you and your father, that that caused this issue in your life? Yeah, I I really didn't think I had a problem. Most of us don't. We go through our life uh, and and we like to point at others and others have problems, but we don't. Uh, I was a perfectionist and I thought that was a good thing. I thought I did things really well uh, growing up on a farm. I, I could fix things, repair things. I could lay under balers and tractors uh, and, and repair things that other people would scratch their heads at. Right. And I was a perfectionist. Well, being a perfectionist leads to problems because it, it's a real relationship issue. When you expect so much of, out of other people, perfectionists are pain. Hmm. They don't know it themselves, yep. but they are. Yep. <laughs> and it leads to uh, all kinds of difficulties. Um, and I began to discover that it was me that had the problem and not other people. It's so easy to point at others. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so many uh, develop critical spirits or uh, judgmentalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's pretty common. <laughs> it is very common, yeah. And and all of us may have a little bit of perfectionist to some degree. I was a bit hyper on it, I think, and was in the, in the process of wrecking my relationships with it. When um, I sat down with a marriage counselor, um, who I, I wondered why he wanted to meet with me because all problems are somebody else's fault, not mine. Right. <laughs> he asked me, tell me about yourself. and. I began, well, in in 1956, my father lost his hand in a corn picker. And the counselor stopped. He said, no, no, stop right there. Uh, He said, I ask you to tell me about your life. Why did you start there? Hmm. And I couldn't answer him. I didn't know. Hmm. That started me thinking, and I I couldn't sleep that night. I I went home to uh, consider, because God was using other people to speak into my life. And begin to point at me. Hmm. And it was through that, that that I discovered 
what I had been placed under as a young person, mm. uh, that I would was blamed for the loss of my father's hand indirectly. Mm. My father never tried to. He didn't intentionally try to harm me. Mm. But just because humans are humans and do what humans do, they, they find it hard to uh, take responsibility. And so his answer when he asked people how he had lost his hand, his answer involved me, mm. that I had lost my finger in a sycamore out in the hayfield just six months prior to that. And his answer was, well, my son lost his finger in a, cor in a sycamore just six months previous, and I had told God I would rather lose my hand my right hand, then have that happen to my son. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, six months later, I lost my hand. Oh, but just that subconscious growing up with that, all the time hearing that answer, I began to take the blame for wow. my father's hand. I took responsibility for him. Wow. Um, and it, it just settles it. And all of us were raised by human parents. Mm -hmm. And all of our parents failed at some measure to provide us all of our basic needs. Our, our basic needs involve acceptance, love, security, um, approval, mm -hmm. uh, comfort, encouragement, and respect. And to some degree, because all of our parents are human, they don't provide all of those things. So we have all of us some lack sure. in our in our sure. upbringing. And it's not the fault of our parents. Mm -hmm. It's the fault of uh, sin that resides in our lives that causes us not mm -hmm. to be the people we ought to be. Do you think your father um, ever got it? I mean, when you were younger, did were you able to say anything? Or do you think there was any point where you just said, you know, I this is really insensitive of me. Maybe I should say this differently than, or stop saying it altogether. Uh, no, he never got it, and I never got it while he was alive. Wow. Uh, he he ne like every not every but many of us strive to gain our parents' approval. And as I've chatted with other people about, they need to most of our hang-ups and, and things that really bother us inside start when we're very young, mm -hmm. four or five. When, when's the first time you said, you owe me an apology mm -hmm. or I'll get you back? Mm -hmm. Very young in age. We're, we're accused of doing something our brother did and we become mad or bitter at that and we start this, this bitterness growing. And, and that's a, it comes from a very early age. And we spend so much time trying to get our parents' approval, as I did my father. Um, and so I never came to this truth until after he had passed away. Terry, what happens in our spirit when, when we say somebody owes us something? Uh, what, what, uh, it, it is a spiritual... Actually, we're going to get into this a little bit later, but it's a spiritual debt, isn't it? That, yes. That mm -hmm. they... Be, and a debt, as you as you describe in in your books, is is like a like a, a kind of like a financial amount that you're owed. Is that right? That's right. I mean, and it's Jesus not literally. Uses, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's a correct translation in the Lord's Prayer: "Forgive us our debts, as right. we forgive our debtors." It's not a transgression. It's not an offense. It's not a sin. It's a debt mm -hmm. because we hold debts against people. They owe us an apology. They owe us our childhood back. They owe us, and we hold that. And we hold it in our heart. Jesus calls it the heart. When he refers to the heart, he's not talking about the blood pump. Right, right. He's talking about the spirit. Mm -hmm. What you're looking at here in me is not me. I live inside this body that you see. Right. I'm a spirit. Right. And I hold that in my spirit, and that's locked in. We may forget it in our psyche. And we may go on living and, and forget what people have done to us. But when we see them again, two, three, five years later, it's right back in our mind. I remember what you did, you owe me. And it's in our mind. So we, we hold that debt. So when when somebody owes us, it's almost like a, a transaction that was signed and we're holding the, the paperwork and exactly. we're holding it in our spirit 
which yeah. is taking up energy and because there's a lot that goes on to hold yeah. that right i mean it exactly it, it takes a and lot that's called uh, that's called baggage that's yeah, the baggage right, of right. life uh, hebrews 12:15 says least any root of bitterness springing up and many be defiled it's mm. that root of bitterness we we have that in us we haven't forgiven it and it's still there it stays there until we forgive it and it kind of adds like a snowball too right exactly. i mean it's it's like it it's like we have the initial paperwork and then it just mm -hmm. the the stack of papers grows somehow yeah. and so i I'm, I'm assuming that every time that your father made that terribly insensitive and frankly cruel comment um, about you, that that paper stack was growing, right? Yes, I, I didn't realize it at the time. I know I would shrink when someone would ask a question because I knew what answer was coming. Um, but it's, it's that building up over time that created me to become a workaholic. Mm. Uh, my father was a very careless man. Obviously, you're careless if you lose your hand in a corn picker. But he was careless at everything he did. And so I became a workaholic. Now, that's an addiction. It is actually addiction. So is anger. So is perfection, perfectionism. Mm. There's forms of addictions. We think of alcohol and drugs. Uh, but the addictions are some of the things that we normally see around us right in our own church views. Yes. And, and I became a workaholic. I worked circles around my father because I knew if he was hurt again, I, the more I did, the less he had to do. Because I knew if he got hurt again, I would get blamed for that, too. And so I became a workaholic. So how help me connect the dots here. So by working more in your mind that meant again and i was protecting him so that he would not get hurt again in oh. some other fashion because i would get blamed for that too if i didn't i became responsible for him is what wow. happened it made me responsible for him wow. and my parents did a fair degree of arguing in the home and i became responsible for their marriage wow. i couldn't solve their arguments and i, I became this very responsible person Mm. That's so uh, much for any human being to have to handle, but especially at a young age. Now, how old are we talking about now? Oh, my, it, uh, all the way through my, I, I left uh, the farm and went to college at Iowa State University when I was 18. So I, I lived that life for 18 years. They, they were in marriage trouble when I was born. So... <laughs> I don't remember a time when there was peace in our home. And so you you just worked and worked and worked and, and worked. Tried to solve solve their issues, yeah. And it, it accumulated in my And I didn't realize I had I spent all that time trying to please them and trying to help them. And it was that counselor who asked me that question, why does your life story begin on that day that your father lost his hand? Wow. And that's when it began to dawn on me that... That was the key that really put the pressure on me to be uh, take responsibility for other people. And I had to forgive my father for giving that answer mm. so that I could be free. It was it was wrecking my life because mm -hmm. of the work workaholic, the uh, perfectionism of trying to make everything perfect in everybody else's life. You become a perfectionist. You develop those things because you're carrying this stuff in your heart. All of these things in your heart create unhappiness. And that's what the Sermon on the Mount is all about. Jesus is happy as the man. We use the term, the King James uses the word blessed. It's translated happy as the man. And he's given us the real path to happiness. And he knows that we're all carrying enough baggage in our hearts to make us unhappy. Mm. And the pursuit of mankind is to find happiness. Mm. And we try all these addictive ways to bring happiness to ourselves. So when you say Sermon on the Mount, you're talking about a sermon that's in the Bible that Jesus spoke on uh, lots of different topics. And um, it literally was on like a mountain side. We call it the Mount, Sermon on the Mount. And there were a large group of people there 
that Jesus um, talks about, again, many different subjects, but one of them is uh, what we have referred to as the Beatitudes. And, um, but Terry, as you're, as you're saying, um, it, it's really kind of the be happies or how, how do you be happy in life? Exactly. That's what Jesus gives us is the true path to happiness. We attempt to use drugs, alcohol, perfectionism, anger. We get angry at people. We're actually after our happiness mm -hmm. uh, it, with all these things that we do. And Jesus gives us the correct. Uh, and the key to it, the, the number six, the the uh, uh, is the key right at the top of the step ladder. He's he's taking us up in the Beatitudes. Happy is the man who is pure in heart, for he shall see God. And that is um, sort of a, a difficult translation. It's a mistranslation, actually. The Greek word pure that is used there is the word kathros, which is a, uh, they didn't have anything in 1611 to put there in that. So they used the word pure. In 1611, we, you mean when the, when the King James Version was translated. When the King James was translated. In, into English. They, they, at that time, again, we're talking about Shakespeare time. Shakespeare <laughs> time. They didn't have a, a good word to translate that that term yeah uh, kathos and so what did they call it instead uh, they put in the word pure okay which is the result if you kathros your heart you'll end up with a pure heart okay. i can understand why they eventually chose that word but the actual word uh, later on we defended we invented something that they reached back into the greek and put that word hmm. right into english and named it uh, have you heard of a catheter Absolutely. <laughs> the catheters are used to drain blood, mm -hmm. uh, drain body fluids. A cathode tube, now that's a recent invention, invention also uses that uh, term. A cathode tube drains electricity. The word, uh, the word kathros in Greek means to drain. And so Jesus is saying, happy is the man who drains his heart. Mm. Because we've got garbage in mm. it. We've got all these debts that we have to drain from our heart. Okay, so Terry, if, if back, you know, if, if we're talking about um, when somebody offends us, when somebody wrongs us in some way, that it's almost like we uh, fill out this paperwork of what they owe us. We carry that around in our heart in our spirit, which constantly is uh, weighing us down and it's taking up energy. And that uh, paperwork builds mm -hmm. as we go. It's, yeah. It snowballs or it stacks up. And so we not only have that initial, initial energy drain from that moment, but now sometimes we have years worth uh, from that one or two or three incidents with that person. Now we have years worth of mm -hmm energy, uh, negative energy that's coming up in our heart and just stored there. And you're saying, Scripture is saying, Jesus was saying in the be happy statements, he is saying that stuff needs to be drained exactly. if you're going to be happy. Yes, and he follows those up with the Lord's Prayer, which right? has in it that phrase in Matthew 6, 12, okay. Okay. forgive us our debts. Okay as we forgive our debtors. And that's a correct word there. Jesus actually used the word debts because he's no, he knows we're holding those debts against people. Hmm. So that's kind of like, um, drain the debts, <laughs> drain that out of me. Um, then I'm holding towards others in the same way that you, you were willing to, to do in my debt toward you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, we have to forgive the same way he does. Hmm. And most people don't understand. That's where it's so enlightening to have. When I wrote the book, I actually wrote it as a sermon on forgiving, on how to forgive. And being an introvert, I didn't put much about myself into the okay. book. And I didn't mm -hmm. put my story in it. And the publishers wouldn't publish it. They said, well, how do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> it's, it's good what you have, but you need to tell the reader you've lived this. Yep. 
And so at the bottom of each chapter, I didn't change the message at all, but at the bottom of each chapter, I put a section called My Journey, of how I walk through each of these chapters and learn to forgive. Because Jesus does two things for us when he forgives. He not only forgives us our sin, which gives us a pardon. He paid for our sin on the cross. His blood shed is a full payment for our sin, and we get a pardon for that. But he did something else for me when he forgave me. He wiped away the record of everything I had ever done. Mm. And that's the second thing. He canceled my debt. Mm. There is no memory from him of what I've done. Uh, the book of Psalms tells us, as far as the east is from the west, hath he removed our sins mm -hmm. from us. Mm -hmm. That's actually a mistranslation. It doesn't actually say that. It sounds like my sin is far away to the east, and I'm over to the west, so they're far away. What it actually says, there's a Hebrew word in there for void. It says, as far as the east is from the west, there is a void between it. You can't find my sins at all. Right. They're not just far away. They're gone. Infinitely gone, right? Because east never he, meets west. I mean, what? He, and cancel, what, yeah. he yeah. canceled the debt. And so we have to, when we forgive, we have to cancel the debt. We not only give a pardon, there's, there, there's two people involved. There's an offender and an offendee. And you can forgive the offender and give them a pardon. But the offendee is not free until they cancel the debt. Hmm. The pardon frees the offender. Canceling the debt frees the offendee. Because that stuff is still in you. That's right. Until it's drained. Yeah, you can give a pardon to the person who offends you, but that doesn't solve it until you cancel the debt. And you need to do that verbally out loud. You say, I, I forgive you. That's the pardon. I cancel the debt. You no longer owe me an apology. You no longer owe me. I am not going to try to collect from you. Wow. Terry, we're going to talk uh, more about this. This is just a very interesting topic, and you obviously have so much experience and um, offer so much help to us on this. Um, let me just remind everybody, I am Pastor Tom, and you can find me in uh, different places. 24today.org is one. It's my blog, and I have uh, all kinds of stuff on there. I have interviews like this one on there. I have things that I write, um, inspirational uh, thoughts, and just different things. 24 today. Dot org. You can also find other things from me at TomWeitzel.com. You can find me on Facebook, uh, 24 Today Facebook, if you search for that. I have a YouTube channel, just lots of ways that you can uh, get uh, more from me. But my guest is Terry Stewick, and you can find him at his website, which is called ForgiveInstantly.com. ForgiveInstantly.com. Dot com and on there you can find uh, uh, oh some YouTube links that actually has uh, Terry that's talking about uh, this particular subject and other things and you can also find his books you can find his books being God uh, subtitles stealing God's power glory and kingdom and also the book that we're talking more about today which is called forgive instantly and live Free. Terry, you want to tell us anything about your website or uh, your books in particular? Um, the book Forgive Instantly and Live Free is used across the country by Gospel Rescue Missions as a textbook on okay. how to forgive. Wow. It is just full of scripture. It will walk you through how to forgive. If you're having trouble forgiving, it will, it will give you the footsteps and the actual prayer and words you need to use to free yourself from those burdens. Mm. And the Gospel Rescue Missions actually use it as a textbook in a 10-week course uh, to teach people how to forgive. It's that practical in its nature. And then your uh, newest book is Being God, Stealing God's Power, Glory, and Kingdom. Would you share on that a little bit? That book is about God's ownership. Okay. That book is a follow-up book to the first book. Okay. Because uh, Forgive Instantly and Live Free is in two parts. The first half is about 
how to forgive, what you need to say, what you need to, uh, and by the way, that's, that is not reconciliation. When you forgive somebody, you, you need just you and God present to do that. You don't mm -hmm. need someone with you. You don't need that person with you that you're forgiving. This is all about cleaning your own heart. If you want to reconcile later and talk with them, that's up to you. Hmm. But the, uh, the cleaning of the heart is a personal growth uh, item. And out of that, uh, once I had uh, forgiven, I felt free. In an hour, I, I, uh, my wife had left for uh, shopping somewhere. I was left alone. I'd been working on this uh, uh, for probably uh, two years, just studying and growing and digging on myself. And I finally knew what I had to do. And I verbally, uh, visually set my father down in a chair. He was no longer alive, but I visioned him in the chair. And I said out loud, Father, I forgive you. I cancel the debt I've held against you. I'm no longer going to try to collect my childhood back. And I freed myself and I instantly felt free. In the next hour, I put everyone who had offended me I put my mother all right on down the line. And at the end of the hour, I felt the peace of God that passes all understanding. I had never felt it before. And I was at peace. Uh, but sure enough, not long after you arrive at that great spiritual position of being totally free from all of that baggage, somebody's going to offend you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we live in a world that that occurs. Absolutely. And so that someone it wasn't long someone offended me and I really ground my teeth on it and I had developed four words to live by forgive everybody for everything because I was going to learn to be a forgiving person of everything well this severe offense came my way and I I had difficulty releasing it and I couldn't have uh, forgive this person and I went to the Bible Jesus said um, uh, he forgave on the cross instantly when he was hanging on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They're not even finished killing him. And he's praying for forgiveness for them. And so uh, I, I said, well, God can forgive instantly. Um, I, I'm going to add the word for instant to my four words. Forgive everybody for everything instantly. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was humanly possible to do it. But if I could get close, I had spent four days grinding on my teeth, finally concluded I had to forgive this person because it was wrecking my life again. The anger was coming back. The perfectionism was coming back. All these things that had beset me were, were beginning to march back in my life. It's called a relapse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're an alcoholic, it's the same thing. You, you can get over it by cleaning your heart. But the relapse happens the next time somebody offends you. And at the end of four days, I, I okay, I'm, I'm going to forgive this person because it's wrecking my life, but I've got to find out how. How can I not waste four days of my life? How can I get this down to one day, maybe one minute? How can I forgive instantly like Jesus? And I went to the Bible to study that, and it was right there in the Lord's Prayer. It was amazing. The last phrase of the Lord's Prayer is, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I looked at that, and what are you saying? Because he used the little word for, for thine is the kingdom. In other words, all the lines that he had just given you, all the things that you had just prayed in the Lord's Prayer were on the foundation that thine is the kingdom. Thine is an ownership word. And I began to think, in other words, all this is possible because God is the owner? Mm. And that's what the second book is about, is ownership, because that became the key to instant forgiveness. If our relationship with God is correct and he's our owner, we can instantly forgive. Let me give you an example. Uh, you have a car sitting out uh, outside. If I were to come and kick in the door of your car and damage your car, I would need to run right back into your house and give you a check for $500 for the damage. Why wouldn't I give that check to the car? I didn't kick you, I kicked your car. Why would I not pay the car? Well, it's because you are the owner. You're responsible for fixing the car. Mm -hmm. You don't give the damage money to the car, mm -hmm. you give it to the owner of the car. If God is our owner, 
and somebody damages me, they don't owe me the apology. They owe my owner. Let that soak in for a I'm second. I'm working on that. Wow. So... <laughs> In other words, if we have our relationship right and we declare, acknowledge him as our owner, which is the highest thing we can acknowledge, then when someone offends us, we don't take offense at all. They owe God for that. Okay, so how, how then in your analogy do we get that offense to God, you know, and not be the middleman who just holds on to it. <laughs> well, every time we say, you owe me an apology, we are stealing from something from God. He owns that. He owns us. We, we acknowledge that God is our owner, but we don't live that way. We take ownership. We guide our own life. We take ownership of our own life. God actually owns us. And when we, uh, remember the verse that says, vengeance is mine, saith yes, the Lord, yes, I will repay. Yes. Vengeance is God's, it belongs to him. And every time we say, I'm going to get you back, or you owe me an apology, we are taking ownership of vengeance. All right, so Terry, if I kick in your car door, what are the steps you are going to go through <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you asked. I mean, literally. I mean, really. Tell <laughs> yeah. Because all of us have been cut off in traffic or something. Okay. And, all right. In so our old flesh, we would shake our fists at someone or be angry. And, and, and in doing so, we have, we've written that contract that says what you, they owe us. Yes. And also, then we are attaching that to our spirit. Yes. And we are holding on to that as though it's... Yeah. It, we are the owner of our life, and it's we're the ones who become that banker, and we have to hold, we have to carry around that all of that offense. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So the book is in two parts. The, the first half is forgiving the past. The second half, the instant part, is forgiving the new stuff that's coming at us because it's it's going to come. And how can we forgive so fast? We can forgive instantly if God is our owner. Let me give you an example because somebody cuts me off in traffic okay. almost every time All I right. drive. Okay. <laughs> and because I have become this forgiving person that acknowledges God as my owner, they don't owe me. I actually pray for those people that cut me off hmm. instead of reacting the way I used to. Now I pray for them. I, you want to hear my prayer? This, these yes. are fun. I love praying for my enemies. <laughs> uh, Lord, don't kill him. <laughs> because God can. You know, I, I know, Lord, you can wreck his entire day for what he just did to me, but forgive him. He didn't hurt me. It's not that bad. Don't collect anything for me. Collect anything you want to for you and what he's done to your property, but don't collect for me. Everything we, that Jesus asks us to do becomes easy once we acknowledge him as our owner. And we live with it. It sounds a lot like the prayer of Jesus, right? On the cross. Uh -huh. Forgive them because they don't they don't know right. the depth of what what they're doing. Exactly. Exactly. You can forgive instantly when you get your relationship right with God, that He's the owner. We start out in our uh, relationship with God, um, uh, acknowledging He exists. We we climb this ladder, okay, I, I know that there is a God. Uh, and sooner or later we accept him as our savior. Okay, now he's my savior, and we move up to uh, make him our Lord. We submit to it or dedicate it, and we keep going up this ladder. And at the very top, he's our owner. Mm -hmm. He owns everything. Mm -hmm. And that second book is a, it lays out from the Bible all of the verses. That it began to scream from uh, every page of the Bible that he owns us, that he has not given up ownership. He's given us all kinds of liberty and freedom, but he never gave up ownership. So, Terry, you literally took a chair, right? It was a literal chair. He and, sure, you, that's correct. and you mentally placed your father that is correct. in that chair. It's so important to do that. Mm -hmm. and, then, and it's important not to have the person there. Right. This is not reconciliation. Okay. This is cleaning your heart. You don't okay. want them there because they'll just argue with you. Okay. Reconciliation, if they're alive, 
can come at a, some other way, right? Some another other time. Way. When okay. you forgive them, you'll be able to treat them differently. Uh, you'll be a totally different person. It changes who you are on the inside. Because when you're carrying all of this stuff, you're this dark person with this dark cloud over you. Yep. And when you clean that heart, you are different. And you treat people differently. Mm. You will be the different person. Mm. So you placed him in that chair mentally and then tell me again basically what, what you said and the steps that you went through. Yes, and it's so important to speak this out loud. You okay, audibly. Lay, I, you cannot lay in bed and think about this. All right. You have to speak this because we are speaking beings. Okay. Genesis 1.26 uh, God made us a speaking being. He created us. He breathed into us. He speaks. He made us a speaking being. Okay. So it's not a thought process. It's an action process. And you have to say it. I cancel the debt. And so my prayer was, Father, I forgive you. That's the pardon I give him. Uh, and that's like, that's like, um, sort of like wadding up that yeah. problem, but you still have it in your spirit, right? That's right. That frees him. Now I need to free myself. Okay. And I go on, I cancel the debt that I have held against you. I'm not going to try to collect my childhood back from you anymore. You were free and so am I. Mm. It's so important to do that because if you have actual ledgers and people actually owe you money and you have it recorded on paper, you lock it in a safe somewhere and, and you keep a note or a mortgage against somebody uh, in your safe. Uh, and you can think about canceling it, but until you actually do, it doesn't happen. Right. I mean, so there's, there, there was an occasion where um, an, um, an employer owed me money. And, and uh, then I, I finally, I, I realized I wasn't going to get that money. And, I, and so I had to, I guess, mentally come to the point where I, where I said, okay, I'm not going to come after you on this. I'm not going to keep uh, sending you emails and calling you up. So I'm going to wad that up. But then I also had to decide um, to let it go mm -hmm. out of and be drained out of me so that not only am I not going to go after him, but now I'm, I'm going to wipe the debt out and just say, I'll, I'll never go after you. It's like, I, it's like it didn't happen. It's exactly. whatever. It just, I'm going on, right? Am exactly. I right on that? That's correct. Let's see. You cancel it in uh, mentally in your heart. It's done. And when you say it, it's finished. Mm -hmm. So you did that with your dad. You did that with your mom. You did that then with everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you learned that that works but not only for those that have hurt you in the past, but now you have to do that probably daily. That's why that part of the Lord's prayer is in there in a daily prayer that we are, we are to uh, just kind of do a mental inventory of our relationships. And has someone hurt us? Is there a new thing that we're holding against somebody? Is there a new debt? And we need to do that daily yeah. and then forgive well, again. There's a possibility of, of, avoiding that debt entirely if you don't start that debt if you never say you owe me an apology okay okay we can instantly forgive we can forgive right when it's happening okay because it's not ours it's god's they owe god okay. and so if you don't start the debt you mm. let them owe god you owe they owe god for that apology they owe him for the let him collect and, and that way you don't even start the debt and, and you don't have to then forgive it and starting the debt is is back to the analogy of the car, yeah. is somebody cut you off. So starting the debt is what an awful person that is. What a terrible thing they did to me. And then you start to think of all of those things and how evil and how much, how upset you are at them and um, how they've hurt you and all of that. That's starting that contract, right? And you're scribbling away, you're writing like crazy, and you're attaching it to your spirit. But you are saying, instead of doing that, then you need to say, this is a person that God loves, this is God's child, and, I'm, and this wrong 
really was not done to me. It was done to God, and I need to give it to God because he says vengeance or or you know all of that belongs in his heart and he'll take care he'll he'll deal with that person but he'll do it in a in a grace-filled loving way but God will take care of that and then we so we shift that immediately from our spirit onto God's heart well we shift it by ownership acknowledging God as the owner if he owns it they don't owe us at all it doesn't matter what they've done they owe him if God's our owner. We don't even have to shift it then, do we? It's like that's it right. We don't take it. Us. it it's, I don't even think about who it is or anything. I, I actually need to pray for them because mm. they have just created a debt to God. Wow. I belong to God. And they've just offended and hurt one of God's possessions. He's going to collect. I, I pray for. And so it's a relationship issue. It's not a mental process of thinking, okay. Uh, and evaluating anything. It belongs to God. It's his. And because I offend people every day myself, I can drive down the road at the speed limit and be driving perfectly. Yes. And I'll make some people mad because I'm going too yes. slow. Yes, right. Yes. And others will be mad at me because I'm going too fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Pass a person on a bicycle at speed limit and he's mad at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you can be doing absolutely correctly and you offend people and i want the same mercy from mm -hmm. god that i'm extending to others because how you forgive others is how he will forgive you mm. terry and so it's, it's it's ownership it's an ownership issue i love that that's why i wrote that second book because it's the biggest topic in the world mm. so someone is saying I mean, someone is out there and they're really trying. They're really trying to work this through. But they're saying, that person does not deserve <laughs> me to act this well toward them. What do you say on that? I, I look at myself. I, I don't deserve the grace that I receive. I never point at others anymore. I'm the only person who could ever wreck my life. I'm the only person who could ever uh, destroy myself. No one else could hurt me. It, it's, I can't evaluate other people. I just have to look at myself and say, thank God for the grace he's given me. Uh, there, there, but by the grace of God, go I. Mm -hmm. And Terry, what do you say for that person that is saying, well, it's like you're just excusing what they did. It's like you're just letting them off the hook. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. You're not letting them off the hook at all. When people, when I held debts against people and they owed me an apology, how is that working for me? Not, not too good. well. I wasn't collecting those. But when mm. you turn that over to God and you say, okay, God, all of these things I've had in my heart, you now own them. I'm forgiving them. They're yours. He's the greatest collector in the world. If they've done something wrong and he wants to collect, he is able to do so. So they're still on the hook with God, but, but at they're least you're not holding that hook anymore. You're not That's holding exactly that weight. Right. I have moved out from in between God and what he wants to do. Wow. This is so fascinating, Terry. I love the way you put this. I love that God has shown you this so that he can... Uh, further teach me on this and uh, my listeners. Again, this is the 24 Today Podcast. I'm Pastor Tom, and Terry Stewick is my guest, and we're just about ready to wrap things up here. It's Terry, and the last name is, uh, by the way, it's T-E-R-R-Y, and last name is Stewick, S-T-U-E-C-K, and his website is forgiveinstantly.com, and on that site, you can find his books, Forgive Instantly and Live Free, and also Being God, Stealing God's Power, Glory, and Kingdom. And you can also find these uh, books on Amazon.com as well. Terry, so the uh, what, I, what I'm hearing you say is the greatest benefit is happiness, because God really wants us to be happy. Exactly. 
we lost our happiness at the Garden of Eden, and mankind has been searching for it ever since. And Jesus gave us the path in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount, how to be happy. To be happy. And so were you, were you instantly happy? Or did it take a little while when you, after you put your father uh, symbolically in that chair and you went through that? Was it just immediately? Was it like the next day or what, what happened? It was instant. Hmm. I felt the peace of God. Just a peace came over me. I knew I had finally accomplished one thing that God had told me to do, hmm. and I had done it correctly. I had forgiven. Hmm. <laughs> My wife got home. And, of course, being a perfectionist and being a critical spirit, I was always um, saying things that would crush her spirit. Mm. And and so she, uh, you know, we had these marital difficulties. And she got home, and I said, I'm a changed man because I felt it. Well, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. At that mm-hmm. point, I was really into Jesus. I was into his forgiveness, wow. not just into his grace Mm. but now i was walking in his path of Mm. forgiveness and i was really in jesus and i was a new creature in christ and i told her i'm a changed person she said we'll see (laughs) because i had tried to change so many times and tried to hold my tongue and tried not to be critical or or make comments that were negative and that doesn't work in our human strength until you clean the source of it and I knew I was different. And that went on for, for some time. I would ask her, did your husband treat you well today? Mm-hmm. Boy, I talk about asking for a report card every single day. Mm-hmm. I asked her that every single day. She wow. finally said, you're never gonna stop asking me that, are you? I said, no, I'm gonna prove to you that I'm different. Wow. <laughs> and it was, it, it, later on she says, wow, this has been a miracle, I've seen it myself. Wow. The man changes like that in one hour. Wow, amazing. Terry, I'm going to, in just a moment, ask you if, if you have any, um, just any cur- an encouragement to someone who may be struggling today with forgiveness. But before I do that, let me just say, um, for you, instead of forgiving, what you did then was that you became a perfectionist. So I'm assuming, based on that, that if we don't forgive, then we, whether it's perfectionism or um, eating too much food or whatever it might be, we will try to find some way to deal with that pain in our heart. Exactly, that is true. And we often don't know what the problem is. We, we think alcoholism is the problem. Uh, we look at somebody and they're on drugs, we think the drugs are the problem. It's not. Jesus said, it's what's in your heart, Mark 7:14. Mm. Uh, it, it's not from the things from the outside that are destroying the person, mm. Jesus said. It's what's in your heart that's destroying you. That and so we drain. look. That's what Jesus said in 714. It, but it needs to be drained, doesn't it? That that's stuff right. in your heart. Jesus said it's not all these things. It's not the alcoholism. It's not the perfection. It's not the anger. All those things are just symptoms of what's in your heart. Wow. Terry, what would you say today if you were just looking one-on-one with someone and and they're just they're saying I love what you're saying how do I start I mean what is this possible is it really possible for me to just forgive and and then say and I let this go I just totally rip it up and throw it away from me and I let it go can I do this Terry yeah yeah because you're wrecking your own life you keep yourself in a cage waiting for someone to apologize. That's never going to do it. You don't have to live in a prison. Mm. You hold the key to it yourself. Jesus said, here's the key to happiness. Forgive it. I'll take care of it. God will still take care and collect as he sees Mm. fit. He may never tell you about it. He doesn't need to. But you need to free yourself because God loves you so much. He provided salvation. He provided forgiveness for you. And if you don't forgive, he won't forgive you. Mm -hmm. If you want to be free, Mm -hmm. learn to forgive. Mm -hmm. It is the bottom line to Christianity. That's Mm -hmm. what we come to Jesus for, Mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And what does he want from us? To give forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
could we just uh could you and i just agree together in prayer for the person that that is uh is struggling right now or maybe even the person that's really great right now but but uh tomorrow they'll be driving and someone's going to cut them off on the road uh, Lord, we come to you right now, and I just ask in the name of Jesus, the one who uh, first began to talk about be happy. We want you to be happy. I want you to be happy. And here's a list of ways how to do that. But, but to be happy, you're going to have to look at your own heart and then see, are there, are there things that you're holding in there? Are there things that, like um, debts uh, that you have written out that, that someone has done uh, that's treated you wrongly and so you write out this debt and you hold it on this this heavy contract that's attached to your spirit and you're holding that and it is stacked up now with many many other instances that just weighs your spirit down and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would help the person that needs to to forgive that for them mm -hmm. to wad that up, to rip that up, to sit the person down that's offended them in that chair. They're, that's not something they're doing face to face at this point. They're just sitting them down in a chair and they're talking about how that person offended them. And then then they're saying, and I, I am I'm wadding this contract up and then Jesus helped them not only to let that person go but then to let themselves go from this mm -hmm. and say yeah. and I cancel the debt totally I'm not gonna keep running after you I'm not gonna keep being drawn back to that day to that moment to those years I'm just going to let it go by the power and the grace of Jesus who forgave me in the same way and I'm not only going to wad it up rip it up but I'm going to throw it as far through your power as the east and it's from the west I create that infinite chasm in between mm -hmm. let it go I pray Jesus yeah. now that you would help us do this by your power in Jesus name Amen Amen. Wow, well, Terry, that's great. Good stuff. Again, uh, uh, remind everyone to go to Terry's website, which is forgiveinstantly.com. Terry Stewick is his name. Forgive Instantly and Live Free is one book. Being God, Stealing God's Power, Glory, and Kingdom is the second book. Uh, again, this is a 24 Today podcast, and if this has been helpful for you, this will also be helpful for someone that you know. And so Terry and I both are going to ask that you would uh, like this, uh, whatever you're, however you're listening, YouTube or uh, in, in the audio podcast form, if you would like it, if you would rate it, if you would subscribe to uh, the channel however you're listening and if you would make comments and then if you would share it you call somebody up tell them about it uh, but all of that helps then for you to spread this healing message that you are feeling today in your own spirit terry thanks again for being my special guest and may god bless you thank you for the information today thank you tom my pleasure god bless remembering uh reminding everyone that there is still time left in this 24-hour period to live life today. Yeah. And the only thing that stops us from forgiving is pride. Mm. We actually want to take our ownership of ourselves. Mm. We, we lift ourselves up above God's ownership. So let go. Let, let go. go. Let go. Thank you, Terry. God bless. If this podcast has been helpful for you and you haven't already subscribed, just uh, just go to the subscribe button that you'll see on the page and subscribe. That way you'll make sure that you get everything that I put on the podcast the moment that it's available. And if it's helpful for you, it probably would be helpful for someone that you know as well. If you could send them a link or tell them about the podcast and then also um, comment 
on the particular podcast where, wherever you're at. Rate it, if you will, and that will help others to be able to see and hear about the podcast.